Okay, so let's take a look at the errors that can be made uh, when testing hypotheses. And in any hypothesis test, you always have four possible outcomes. Two are good, two are bad. And, and that's true of our criminal justice system as well. Imagine we had talked before, H naught is presuming a person is innocent. And if H A is that this person is guilty, keep in mind, we can return a verdict, verdict of not guilty. Oops, it's not how you spell guilty. Not giddy. All right, not guilty or guilty. All right, so if a person's innocent and you say they're not guilty, that's a good thing. If a person's guilty and you say that it's gu they're guilty, that's a good thing. But you can see the errors here. What if a person was innocent and you found them guilty? That's an error. Or what if a person was guilty and you found them not guilty? That's also an error. So like I said, in any test, and even in any court of law, there's always four possible outcomes. Two are correct, two are errors. So here's a kind of how we can keep track of this. Now, if the null is true and you keep it, right? Although again, I have to say as a stats teacher, we never actually say keep H naught, we say fail to reject H naught. And as we move forward through the chapter, I'll really kind of press us on making sure we use the correct um, verbiage, but for right now, if H not is true and you keep it, that's a good thing, right? So if an innocent person is found not guilty, that's a great thing, right? We, we want people that are innocent to be found, again, we're not calling them innocent, we're just saying, hey, they're not guilty. That's, that's, a, that's something that we want. Okay, so on the flip of that, all right, what if somebody was innocent Right? But you rejected that innocence, you found them guilty. So if somebody was innocent and you found them guilty, we would actually call that a type one error in stats. Okay? So that would be like finding an innocent person guilty. Now on the flip of that, what if somebody was actually guilty? What if the alternate really was true? All right, if you were guilty, all right, and we found you guilty. That's a good thing, right? So if the alternate's true and we reject the null, or again, we, we take AHA, that's a good thing. But here's the other error. What if somebody's guilty and we keep the null, right? What if somebody's guilty and we keep the null? We say, hey, you're not guilty. That's the type two error, okay? So in terms of errors that we can make, let's do this again. Innocent person, not guilty, great. Innocent person, guilty, bad. Guilty person, not guilty bad, guilty person found guilty, good. All right, so we've got a type one error, a type two error, and then the, the two correct outcomes. All right, so then the fun really kicks in in how we write this. So we're gonna say a type one error is the error of rejecting H naught when H naught is true. All right, so we are mistakenly rejecting a null hypothesis when the null is true. So let me write here, right? We would say we mistakenly reject H naught when it's true. Okay. And probably my favorite phrasing is the type two error. The error of failing to reject the null when it's false. And that just, it sounds so convoluted to say out loud, right? So failing to reject the null when it's false. So again, null is false. We should have gotten rid of it, but we didn't. All right, so we should have rejected the null, but we didn't. And these can be a lot to take in, especially with these, these funky wordings. And I'm just gonna give you something real quick that helped me when I was going through college learning about this. If it helps you, great. And if it doesn't, then don't use it. But when I was trying to remember, okay, which one is which, I called H naught the first equation, and I called HA the second equation. And I'm gonna put equation in quotes, and I'll explain why in just a bit, okay? So I'll call H naught the first equation, H A the second equation. And that sound effect was me making quote marks. Apparently that's what they sound like. 
The reason I put equation in quote marks, and this has to be, do with me being a math nerd, which is an awesome thing to be, is because technically in math, something's not an equation unless it has the equal sign, and the alternate never has the equal sign. That's why I call it a equation, okay? Now, this was what helped me figure out which errors were which. Again, if it helps you, great. And if it doesn't, then find something that works for you. I knew in a type one equation, the first equation was true, but I made a mistake. So I knew in type one, Po was true because type, whichever error I was making told me which equation was true. So type one error, first equation true. So I knew first equation true, but I made an error. So I mistakenly chose the second one. I mistakenly chose ha. So here I knew first equation true, but I mistakenly chose second. Again, in quotes, all right? If that helps you, great. If it doesn't, come up with your own. And then I knew that for a type two error, then the second equation was true because whatever the type of error it was, that meant that was the equation that was the true one. All right, so in a type two error, the second equation was true, but I mistakenly chose the first equation. Now, this, this doesn't help everybody. I've had some students say, oh, this makes it more confusing for me. I, I like the chart. Then use the chart. That's awesome. I'm just telling you, like, that's how I did it when I was in college. I had to do it that way. If you like the chart, then by all means, use the chart. Find a way that works for you. It doesn't have to be the way I did it. All right. So with that, we're going to look through example five. All right. First thing we're going to figure out is what land we're in. All right. Then we'll, we'll figure out our null and all, our alternate. Then we're going to see, hey, what, what are the type one and type two errors? And what does that actually mean? What are the real world consequences for this? So let me push this up so we can get this all in view. I'm gonna try and keep the table in view as long as I can. Probably don't have a ton of time with that. Oh well, what are you gonna do? All right, here we go. The US Department of Transportation reported that during a recent period, 77% of all domestic passenger flights arrived on time meaning within 15 minutes of the scheduled arrival. Suppose that an airline with a poor on-time record decides to offer its employees a bonus if, in an upcoming month, the airline's proportion of on-time flights exceeds the overall industry rate of 0.77. Let P be the true proportion of airlines' flights that are on time during the month of interest. Okay, and we got what are the null and alternate? So before we do anything, let's figure out what land we're in. So there's a bunch of clues as to what land we're in. Uh, the biggest one, or one of the biggest ones, right? The word proportion, I see P, I see 77%. All right, those are all great indicators of what land we're in, all right? Even the 0.77 here, right? I've got a number between zero and one. It doesn't always mean you're in proportion land, but it's definitely on the table that you're in prop land. So let me put here prop land, okay? In terms of the null and alternate, we got H naught, colon, right? H A, colon. Both of these are gonna have P's, right? The reason I know they're gonna have P's is because I'm in proportion land. Uh, I'm gonna put an equal symbol here. And I have no reason to think that these employees are gonna do any better, right? We're gonna keep the status quo, what's always been happening, nothing new happens. That's the null, it's the boring one, 0.77, okay? And then we're gonna see if they can beat this. And in terms of which direction it goes, all right, which, which slant we want, the words here, right? It says exceeds the overall industry rate of 0.77. So this phrasing is what gives me the symbol for my alternate, right? This is not the two-sided test. This is a specific greater than a right-tailed one-sided test. So let's just take note here, right? This is a right tailed test, or you could call it a one sided test. 
Okay, so now we gotta figure out what do the type one and type two errors mean in the context of this question, okay? I'm gonna scooch this page up. We are gonna lose the table. I can't keep it in there, which is fine. You can reference back to it. I just can't get it on the same screen as the problem. So when I talk about what are the errors, you always wanna write the errors up in terms of the alternate. So I'm just gonna put this on the side here. I'm gonna say always write errors in terms of HA. All right. And the reason for that is because the burden of proof falls on the alternate. Right? I'm not proving or disproving whether the null is true. I get to assume the null is true. The burden of proof is on the alternate. So stats folks choose to write the errors about the alternate because that's where we can mess up. Again, we're assuming the null is true. It's all about whether or not we have enough evidence, enough proof to change our minds, to change away from the status quo and go with the alternate. All right, beyond a reasonable doubt, do we go with the alternate? All right, so let's, let's take a look at this. So we've got our type one error. I'm gonna talk about it and then I'm gonna write it up, okay? So in a type one error, again, when I was in college, I told myself, well, for a type one error, that meant the first equation was true, right? Ho was true, the null is true. So this is the true one, okay? But I made an error. So I mistakenly chose the alternate, right? So I concluded the alternate even though it wasn't true. And when I say concluded the alternate, what that means in this problem, in the context of this problem, if I concluded the alternate, I concluded the true proportion of on-time flights was greater than 77% when it wasn't, right? I made a mistake, all right? So conclude, and I'll say the true proportion of on-time flights is greater than 77% when it isn't. All right, so that's a mistake. I, I, I could say, hey, they're doing better this month but maybe they really weren't doing better this month, right? So I made an error. I concluded the true proportion of on-time flights was greater than 77% when it wasn't, okay? Now, for a type two error, type two error, let's think about what a type two error would be here. So in a type two error, the alternate is true, right? The second equation is true, but I mistakenly concluded the first, right? So the alternate's true, but I kept the null. So where we have to be careful here is if the alternate's true and I didn't take it and I wanna write up all of these errors in terms of the alternate, all right, what happens was I did not conclude the true proportion of on-time flights was greater than 77% when it was. All right, so let me write this up. Do not conclude the true proportion of on-time flights is greater than 77% when it is. Take a moment, get that down, and I really want us to hone in on similarities and differences. So a couple of things to note. Nowhere in here do I mention the true proportion being equal to 77%. None of this is written in terms of the null. It's always written in terms of the alternate. So your error should always be about whether you concluded the alternate or the complement, you did not conclude the alternate, right? Type one concluded the alternate. Type two, the complement did not conclude the alternate because you're comp these are competing claims, right? I'm gonna either pick it or I'm not gonna pick it. So take a look at the wording on both of these. They're super similar, right? The only difference is where the not is occurring, right? You can see here, I concluded the alternate when it was not true, right? 
Here, I did not conclude the alternate when it was true. So the not is what changes here. So these two write-ups for the type one error, type two error, super similar, because they're all about the alternate, right? Greater than 77%, right? Greater than 77%. This is just, I didn't conclude the alternate when I should have. This is, I conclude the alternate when I shouldn't have, all right? So that's what I'll be looking for you to do in terms of the write-ups of your errors. They should always be in terms of the alternate. All right, and with that, let's think about what the consequence is of all of these are. So let me scooch this up one more time and let's think about what this would mean, okay? So it looks like I gotta scoot it way up so we can get all of this in. All right, so then what are the type one and type two consequences? So let's think about this. Type one consequence. Okay, so what's gonna happen to these employees if I make a type one error. So if I conclude the true proportion of on-time flights is greater than 77%, what's gonna happen to the employees? They're gonna get their bonus, all right? Did they earn their bonus? No, but they're gonna get their bonus. So I'm gonna reward employees with an undeserved bonus. So I'm gonna say, hey, great job guys, when really they didn't do a great job, or at least they did the same job they did in the month before. They didn't improve, but they're gonna, they're gonna get a bonus from it. Okay, let's think about the type two bonus. Oh, excuse me, the type two consequence. All right, so this is, it did not conclude the true proportion of on-time flights was greater than 77% when it was. So since I did not conclude it was greater than 77%, they're not gonna get their bonus. But did they earn their bonus? This time they did. So the type two consequence is I do not reward employees with the bonus they deserve. step back, there's ultimately four possibilities, or I should say four outcomes here, right? The employees don't deserve a bonus and I don't give it to them. The employees deserve a bonus and I give it to them. The employees don't deserve a bonus and I give, I think I said this wrong. Hold on. Let me back this up because I just lost track of my own, my own sentence. All right. Four outcomes. If, if the null is true, right? I know we're assuming it, but if the null is true and I fail to reject it, the employees don't deserve a bonus and I don't give it to them. Great. All right, if the alternate's true and I, I take it, the employees deserve a bonus and I give it to them. Great. The errors, the employees might not deserve a bonus, but I give it to them. That's a problem, right? Or the employees might deserve a bonus and I don't give it to them. That's also a problem. All right, so we've got the consequences, right? Reward employees with an undeserved bonus, that's a type one consequence. Do not reward employees with a deserved bonus. That's a type two consequence. And I'll have to ask, which one's worse? All right, which one do you think is worse? Do you think it's worse to reward employees with an undeserved bonus? Or do you think it's worse to reward, I'm sorry, to not reward employees with a deserved bonus? Which type, uh, which consequence is worse? And some of you might be having different opinions here. I, I think it depends on who you are. If you're an employee, then the type two error is worse, right? You're like, dude, I, I, I earned my bonus and I didn't get it. That's the worst error. If you're the airline, the type one error is worse, right? If you're the airline, if you're the CEO, you're like, I don't wanna be giving out money that they didn't earn. So I think in this case, it really depends on which side of the coin you're on in terms of which error is worse. When we get to the next page and we look at a, a different type of problem, I think it'll be more clear. I think most of us will have one opinion in terms of what error is worse. But this one's just kind of fun to ask because we might have different opinions depending on, like I said, which side of the coin we're on, employee or owner. All right, I'll see you on the flip, bye.